tracking from above. That's from a satellite. That's tracking from below. We also, as we go back to this tracking here, you notice we'll see the, we can actually see the plane banking and you can actually zoom in and zoom out. This is actually how General Dynamics sells the F-16. It's the F-16, it'll fly you, it'll thrill you, but most of all, it'll kill you. Anyway, so we're going to be looking around here at some other things. Um, some other zooms, let's see, let's look at, this is the padlock view. That's a little bit, that's a little bit more of a scary way to fly. You really have to be on top of this program to use it. Let's look back out the front of the aircraft. Now, as you're flying, as you're flying the aircraft, there's some other views you can do, too. You can actually look out the left side, and as you notice as I bank, I can look out the left side. If you look out the right, you can look up and down. Again, you can look out the, fr uh, the front of the plane, and you can look out the back of the plane. Um, okay, so we got this thing flying. I don't see anybody else. A lot of other functions. You can go into the war room. You have missions. You can get a squadron. You have all this kind of stuff. Falcon is a huge program, though. When you're installing it in your uh, computer, it takes just about every byte of RAM you've got. I even had to disconnect everything, even the mouse, to get it to work. Uh, that's something you might want to take into consideration before uh, getting started with Falcon. Uh, let's take a look at the system requirements. If you'd like to actually fly a plane without maybe getting shot at, you might want to try Flight Simulator, Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator. This is version, this is the latest version, 5.0. And uh, Flight Simulator uh, does, you know, everything you'd want to do. It, it, the, the nice thing about it is you ac actually can fly it without getting shot at. Let's go ahead and what we have to do first is take off the parking brakes. You notice you're looking right at the dashboard. You're looking at all the instruments and right ahead of us is the runway. This is where Flight Simulator starts you out at. You're actually sitting in Chicago and you can see the John Hancock building, I believe, out in the distance. And let's go ahead and what we do is we give the RPM, we give some RPM here, and we're rolling down the runway. You can see the beautiful sounding Lycoming engine that comes in the Cessna. This is a Cessna 182RG, has retractable gear. And what you do as uh, you reach a 60 miles an hour and then 70, you just rotate, which means pull the nose back a little bit. And we are slowly but surely up in the air. You notice we're taking off. Very realistic. This is very similar to how it is uh, flying a plane like this. In fact, I have my pilot's license and I've flown a plane like this, and it is very realistic. Uh, and it does give you a lot of information in learning how to fly. You don't use a keyboard in a real aircraft, but, well, you know. Um, so what we do here is, as we take off, you can see the we're gaining some altitude. Let's give it a little bit more power. And you kind of see the sky. You can see the buildings. Let's go ahead and take a look at some... Uh, some of the other views, you can look out the sides of the aircraft, for example. You can look out the left side, look out the right side, look out the back of the aircraft. You can see the, end, uh, the aircraft or the uh, runway right behind us, and there's the beacon light flashing, very realistic. Now let's go ahead. Another thing you can do is we can actually, through the options, use different aircraft. We're in a 182 right now, but for some fun, you also can go down here to where it says aircraft and it'll put you right in the same spot. You no notice on the bottom there, it's showing you a Cessna 182 with the gear up. Let's try a Learjet. Let's see what happens when we go into a Learjet. You'll notice that the dashboard will change very rapidly. And instead of seeing RPM, see, there we go, we're gonna, we're cruising, we're gonna get up to altitude very quickly in the Learjet. And you can hear the very powerful Learjet engines. And if you notice the, alt uh, the altimeter, which is uh, to the right. Oops, and so we're banking quite a bit here. Yeah. Gotta straighten out our bank or we're not gonna make it. Whoa, we are all over the place. Okay. One thing you have to do, this is a very sensitive, especially flying a Learjet, this is kind of sensitive. Oh, there we go. Notice, notice the flight. You don't want me ca captaining your flight to Miami. <laughs> I wonder if there's an eject button. <laughs> all right, let's look at some other aircraft before I crash. Uh, let's go to uh, no, no, let's go to the options again. Let's pick uh, maybe a little bit of a slower aircraft. There are four aircraft built into this. The other one would be Sopwith Camel, which if uh, you've ever watched the Peanuts, that's what Snoopy flies, or he's supposed to be flying. He actually flies his doghouse. This is, hey, looks like we're doing a roll or something. Um, looks like we're going right over Chicago. This is beautiful. This is, a, this is a nice flight, isn't it? Isn't this fun? Anybody get nauseous? I know I am. Help me, help me. Okay, if, if, uh, flight simulator really gives you the feel for what it's like to fly. On, on, <laughs> here are the, let's take a look at the system requirements for flight simulator.
I'm doing my show. You don't have a show. I do too. Well, there's somebody here to see you. Oh, that's right, yeah. I asked a computer artist to stop by. He's going to show us how to be creative with our computer. To home computing, we're having more fun now. I'm here with my art director friend, Jock Myro. Jock, thanks for coming. Pleasure to be here, You Tim. met the wife? Met the wife? Met the wife? Your wife? Yes. Yeah, I think it was earlier. <laughs> that's my on wife. The, She's on in the my way house. Down the stairs to the den. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> well, he's going to show us today a program, Corel Draw, a powerful graphics package. And uh, if anybody would know it, Jock would. So just wanted to kind of show you the packaging real quick. Let's go ahead and let's go into a little bit of what Corel Draw will do. Okay. What Corel Draw is, actually, is it's a collection of programs. There's Corel Draw, which is a drawing package. There's Corel Chart, which is a charting package. There's Corel Paint, which is an image painting package. There's a capture program. There's Corel Trace, and there's Corel Mosaic, which organizes clip art files. I think you wanted to, you wanted to mention something about clip art? Well, yeah, just we just kind of wanted to make sure that you know, people well, need to know what clip art is and how okay. they can use it. Okay, well, one of the things that Corel comes with is Corel comes with a huge library of images on disk. And we'll go to that now. I'll click on Corel Mosaic, brings it up. And what this is, is like a file folder organizer. And it'll show you a little thumbnail sketch of each of your available pieces of artwork. Okay. See, Corel allows you to not only create artwork in, in its own drawing programs in a variety of different formats, uh, TIFF, Targa, PCX. It also allows you to import from a huge library of uh, clip art that comes with the program on CD-ROM. Okay. For instance, let's take, uh, let's click on Clark Gable here. Okay. And let's uh, import him into Draw. All right. And you can see I'm doing a lot of programming. It's a real program. Yeah. Intense. <laughs> it's a point and click kind yeah, of deal. Yeah, exactly. Just kind so of for graphics, it's, uh, it's easy and it's a lot of fun to use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to a tool on our toolbar and click Magnify. And then I'm going to draw around the area I want to magnify. Okay. And as you can see, we have Mr. Gable real large. And that seems to be just as clear in a big image as it is in a smaller image. That's right. One of the things about, uh, one of the things about Corel is it's, uh, it's what's known as vector-based drawing. In other words, the computer doesn't know that this is a nose. It only knows that this is a line that, uh, that is mathematically defined. Mm. So no, in other words, these images, they can be this big on a piece of paper or they can be huge. It doesn't matter. Mm. So when you create something, you can, go in, you can go in very close. What we're gonna do now with this is we're gonna ungroup it. So it's a, a whole bunch of different objects. And then we're gonna click on one part of it and we're going to affect that object. In other words, we're going to take hmm. his nose and we're going to move it out like All that. Right. So it's got okay. a bigger nose now. So, so he's got a bigger nose now. And then we would go to this gray area, okay, and we're going to take this and we're going to move that out. As you can see, oh. we've kind of changed his visage quite a bit. <laughs> right. Okay, so that's, that's one example of how you can work with clip art. You can bring it in and modify it. You can combine clip art images for whatever sort of look you're looking for. Or you can create your own artwork and go in just as deep as we've gone here and manipulate fine points of the image. Okay. So even for the non-artist, it's pretty easy to use. Yeah, exactly. In fact, that's one of the things I wanted to take a look at is actually doing your own art. Okay, well, let's take a look at that. We'll go to New. It says, do I want to save this, save these changes? No, nah, I don't think Clark Cable would like that. As far as our clip art we just looked at, other graphics programs could use that clip art? That, that's correct. We have, another, uh, we have another clip art disc here full spectrum clip art oh. and uh, this is in a different format and it can access this disk and uh, and use these images too so okay. almost any any form of clip art uh, can be used on our CD-ROM we've got a computer here and I'll open this up just so you can take a quick look at it what we've got in here okay is we've got the uh, Corel Art CD-ROM in here, okay. and the nice thing about getting programs on a CD-ROM is not only does uh, not only does all the clip art reside on here. It's like a big floppy disk, you know that, though. Right, right. Um, but the program itself is also on here. So when you want to load this program, when you want to actually install this program, instead of taking about 45 minutes, like on disk, and you put disk 12, mm, put disk 13, 13 right. keep going and going, this takes about three minutes and it just goes. Wham! And you're in. you're, you're oh. done. So oh, okay. I'm I'm a big fan of CD-ROMs for computers. But anyway, okay. let, let's okay. Uh, let's get back to this. I'll show you how to draw some stuff. Okay. Okay. We just made the page really big. We're going to turn off Snap to Grid. What Snap to Grid is? This has some wonderful features on it. Uh, if you want to draw a perfect square, you can see how my square is going to where the little dots are. So even if you're not an artist, it's very easy to do really precise sorts of drawings. Okay. Okay. We're going to delete that little guy right there. Okay. And we're going to draw a free hand. Okay. So we're going to go like this, and we're going to kind of, let's see, we'll do a nose like we saw before. 
And we'll put some glasses on it. It's a very mathematical it. nose. Yeah, right it's there. a very mathematical <laughs> nose. And we'll do a little face here. Okay. And there we go. So I've drawn that freehand. Now, what I can do is I can go in with this program and I can take a look at this line and I can say, well, you know, there's like way too many points here. I don't need this little curve here or I want to change it. I want to change the angle of this nostril over mm -hmm. here. I want to change the edge of the nose here. You can see how much manipulation I'm doing oh, sure. on this. I mean, it, it gives you a lot of leeway as far as what you want to do. So with you really images. don't have to be a great freehand artist. No, not. Yeah. I mean, you can you can just sort of just um, you can just rough things in and then go in and change the points of it till it looks exactly how you want it to look, yeah. and then the image is completely scalable. Hmm. So that's great. And you can also like get. Uh, like business programs can use can merge Corel Draw, is that right? And put that, charts and graphs and things like that. That's correct. Let's let's take a look at some of these. We're going to exit out of this part of Corel, and we see the the uh, library comes up in the background. We're going to move that down, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, a part called Corel Chart, and what Corel Chart allows you to do is do extremely professional 3D graphs using a spreadsheet program. Doesn't look like much now but I'm a <laughs> very professional looking. Uh, okay, let's go to some uh, samples in here. Okay. And you can see that we're going to, we see a little preview. It's a 3D step bar graph, top 10 worldwide advertising agencies. And let's take a look at that. And it's going to load that right up. We can make that larger if we want so we can take a better look at it. But this graphic is linked to a spreadsheet program oh, that's wow. also in CorelDRAW. So you can enter statistics on a spreadsheet, and it'll do this sort of a graph for you automatically. Oh, wow. So it's a, it's a real good program for the person who's a novice if they just want to try drawing with some of the paint programs or some of the drawing programs. Or if you have real bona fide uh, uh, business applications like this, sure. you can do real professional-looking presentations. Hmm. And graphics and animation. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and, and is there anything else we, you'd like to hit on this right now? Or should we take a look at that other clip art? Let's, what, let's take another look at the, let's take a look at that other clip art disc just to see what else we can get okay. in here. I'm going to pull this, is the, this I out. think the important part of the graphics programs is, you know, at home people can actually get art that they don't have to actually draw and create and they can, if they're putting together a newsletter, there's a lot of clip right. art out there that they can actually put with their newsletter and uh, their business productions, anything you want to do. Okay. And it says it can't find any of the things it could find before, so we're going to go and tell it to go to drive E again. Okay. And now it says, oh, let's see, what do you, you want to look at? You want to look mm. at Beast? Beast, sure. Let's okay. do Beast. And there's the images that are on Beast. We're going to click okay. on it. So this is still Corel Draw, but now we're using from another company a whole different uh, package of clip art. So Correct. just so people are kind of Correct. getting a feel for what we're doing here. That's right. So, and, and there's now a variety of clip art that's available uh, very inexpensively. You can do mail order and you can get, uh, or you can go to any of your local computer stores. And there's a variety of clip art discs. Let's say you're putting together a, uh, a presentation on, uh, oh. Uh, beast. Beast. <laughs> beast. Here, let's click on this beast and let's, uh, let's import him into draw. It'll take just a second here. Okay. Because I know we gotta, we got to kind of wrap up here yeah, pretty quick, sure. I would imagine. But... Uh, here comes our beast, and okay. if you were doing a newsletter on dogs, you would have this graphic hey. right there. <laughs> that's your, that's and that's the dog we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's a lovely looking animal. Oh, Clipper. Well, hey, great. And there you Joe, go. Thanks so much for coming. Well, thanks it was a lot great. for having me. That's Appreciate right. it. Glad you could stop by with your mm. computer. Hey, uh, drawing on computers is a blast, isn't it? And uh, just to be fair, us grown ups shouldn't let, uh, have all the fun. Why don't when we come back, let's look at a computer design program that's for kids. It. At that point, you can either spend six weeks teaching them Corel Draw, or you can get them this program, KidCAD. Actually, quite a fun program, and uh, it's for ages seven and up, and actually, I think they could do it younger, and actually, I kind of enjoy it, and I'm well over seven. Uh, right now, as we're looking at, we're looking at one of the panorama views, uh, this one being the farm. And uh, just for the kids, if they want to just have some fun, they can hit, they can click with their mouse, different pieces of the, huh, what was that? And uh, that had something to do with that windmill. Uh, we can uh, also click the house. And there's like bats in the belfry. You can click the silo on the far right. 
stuff happens there. So this is kind of fun for kids, and you know, I've played with this for hours. And uh, we can actually uh, see the little scarecrow over there. There are actually not only the farm, but we can go over to, by going up to the go screen, you click that, you can go over to the town, which has whole different music. Oh no, maybe it doesn't. Well, and we have a whole different music here in the town area, and you can do the same thing. Yeah, there's some different music. It's a gum commercial. Oh, there's another one. That sound is in every one of these. And then we can go just click on any one of the things here. There's actually a boat, I believe, that comes down here by the river. There's a car that races down here into the cul-de-sac. There's nothing I like better than cars racing through my cul-de-sac. Let's go ahead and go over to city. We've got a full city here, and you can see actually the town and the farm in the background. We're actually going to now do the thing that KidCAD is all set up for. That is the design studio. You would click in the same area. You hit design studio and it builds an area that you can start just building things. Now this doesn't, isn't just drawing and trying to draw it yourself. They give you so many tools for building it's great. You have blocks here. For example, you can click any one of these blocks, move it over into your area. We'll just put it over here in the corner. Let it go. Makes a sound and there's a block. Okay, But they don't just give you blocks. You can have building blocks. If you go down here, it shows you many things and it's actually musical. So you can actually go through like that uh, and actually can just build a house yourself you click the uh, house button and it shows you different kinds of houses you can build a mansion which you can see over in the lower right hand corner you can build a castle let's go ahead and put a mansion in there real quick and when as that's loading in what we'll do is we'll just move it right over into the it takes a second because a mansion is a little larger than a block and this is something else the kids can learn mansion larger than block okay now we're uh, over here we lay in our mansion not only can you build build the mansion, you can paint it, you got the mansion in there, you can paint it, it shows you paint, you know, you can put in green floor, it also has wallpapering, it also has, you can put in red brick, a lot of different choices, you can put in brick, let's just put some brick somewhere, over there, you notice there's brick, you can also rotate the view, so you can see the, beam me up Scotty, and then you can also look at the back of the house, another fun thing you can do is not, you can put in people, and other things you can put in are, an, whoops, are animals, you notice there's animals right there. We can go right over and put in a Tyrannosaurus Rex. As we do that, we can place the Tyrannosaurus Rex and actually wallpaper him if you wanted, which I think that's actually kind of fun. We'll wallpaper the Tyrannosaurus Rex really quickly here. Hey, he's all wallpapered. Okay, um, basically a lot of functions here. The hardest thing about KidCAD is giving it up long enough to let a kid try it. Uh, let's take a look at the system requirements for KidCAD. Well, we found out today that flying's a lot of fun, kinda, but drawing is a lot safer. Well, at least when I'm at the wheel. Thanks for joining us again on another adventure of home computing.